Welcome back to Let's Waffle. Looking at round 15, we're into part two of this week's edition. John Ali Pickett, 38 years of age. Allegedly 38. Allegedly 38. Well, there needs to be some allegedly ring... 38 in a couple of weeks' time. There needs to be some ring barking going on uh, there because uh, he may be a little bit older than that. But 38 years of age and uh, <coughs> just ran rings around some instrumental defenders at the weekend. Well, he, he had a 10-minute burst on Brad Shepard, and I don't think Brad Shepard's had his pants pulled down, down like that. And this is a bloke who's an AFL listed player who played, who has played AFL and occasionally has played OK AFL footy, not not special but OK. He said his pants pulled down by a bloke who's 20 years older than him, and he learnt a valuable lesson, I think, on Saturday in that 10 minutes. Well, you hope he learnt the lesson. One of the lessons is when you're playing on a player who is significantly better than you are, and quite sharper and uh, more mature in a lot of ways, you stick very close to him particularly when he's one-sided. That's one, one advantage that you got. You know that he will never go on his right side. So, easy to say in, in theory, obviously, and uh, playing on a, a bloke like that when the ball's coming in and they're a pretty good side. They're not a bad side, Subi. The system is pretty good. Their forwards are going pretty well. Broadhurst is in good nick and Michael Ricks is in great nick and Kyle Horsley was very good. Um, so you've got a few advantages down there. But one thing you just want to do if you're getting beaten by a, a little bloke in the forward line, you just lock down, don't you? You just stop him getting the footy, and if you do that, that's uh, an advantage to your team. But unfortunately, locking down a opposition player may not have been the priority for uh, certain players in the East Fremantle side, and so Alec Pickett kicks five. Oh, well, that doesn't really matter. We've still got our 12 kicks and four inside 50s and seven rebound 50s well, and that's interesting. ran to space Would, and all uh, that sort of stuff. Are, and the the team Fremantle, players, are the East Fremantle AFL listed players or the West Coast listed players more concerned with what Ian Miller may say to them on the Monday than what Steve Malaxis is saying to them on the Saturday. Well, I Ian Miller being the play, player welfare and waffle manager. Oh, the I'm sure they're more concerned about one jo what John Worsfold might, might say to them. And it's, as we talk, touched on before, it's different priorities. Um, but still, the game of foot, once you, once you walk onto the field or you run onto the field, you're surely playing for whatever jumper you've, you've got on and your priority is to get the four points and to be ahead at the end of the game. I think yeah. you need to say that, allegedly. But just going back to Ellie Pickett. Allegedly. In, an interesting, interesting, well, allegedly, but certainly some AFL players and their commitment. Mm. Uh, Ellie Pickett, Hall of Fame. WA Football Hall of Fame. Now, he does have to be retired for three years before he's eligible. Does he Should, should he go straight in? I mean, a Jules Sandover medalist, multiple uh, premiership winner, the Hall of Fame is obviously looked at very much pre-87 waffle mm. and concentrated on the two AFL sides since then. Is my assessment correct that there's been no pure waffle player gone into the Hall of Fame since 87? Correct. So he would be the best credentialed, I would have mm. thought. Uh, he's won two Sandover medals. He's about to play his 200th waffle game and he's, he's gonna, I think he's going to pass it this week when you include state games. And... Uh, or he maybe he'll, he'll go to 200 this week. Four premierships, two Sandover medals, 200 games. I think, I mean, you can argue pretty strongly that he's been the best waffle player since the introduction of the AFL teams here, so he's the best player in a quarter of a century. And he didn't start playing until he was about 30. <laughs> yes. I mean, he played two or three games at West Perth in the mid-90s, and then he did his knee and went into the country and wasn't seen. But he, even then he was sort of mid-twenties, I think, when he played at West Perth, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been an absolute ornament to the game. He, uh, his preparation is second to none, and if you're nearly 38 and you're still going around all right, well, you've got to do a few things right. I think his preparation has been ideal. He's smart, he's quick, he's very clever. Uh, he's played on a good side for most of that period, but that obviously helps. Uh, Should he go straight in? Three years? No, no, I think that, no, there's a reason for that. You know, for that waiting period, there's a, there's a cooling off period, and you assess everyone. No, straight in as in now. Once he completes his oh, three-year qualification. I, I, look, there's two players. There's him and his great premiership teammate Brad Smith, who are the best two players of the past 25 years in the waffle. And I would have th I would have thought that when he is eligible, he should go into the Hall of Fame. Be cool. Are you talking about players who have just played? Pure, pure, purely waffle players. players. I don't include blokes like Sean King, who played one AFL game. Paul Mifka. Paul Mifka. Ryan Turnbull's another one, but he's obviously, well, he, you know... But he won a premiership with West Coast. Yeah, and he's, he's a substantial uh, player as well. But he, I mean, he's one who could well go into the WA Hall of Fame. I've, I've got no doubt that Pickett is the best credentialed of all what pure waffle players of the last 25 years. And he, 
the great thing about him, he turns 38 in about a month's time, I think it is, four, maybe four weeks. He played as well as he did on Saturday. He played as well as he did 10 years ago when he, when he won Sandoz. And he, he helped the team win the game, and he can't do much more than that. be an interesting one for the Hall of Fame committee, I think, uh, whether they embrace modern... WAFL and does the WAFL well, then Well, I can tell you, there's one former Subiaco player who's on a campaign to get into the AFL Hall of Fame, and maybe there needs to be a campaign for okay. one soon-to-be former Subiaco player to get a campaign to go into the Waffle I don't think Hall he, of Fame. I don't think he wants to wait three years, though, Ocker, does he? No, yeah, he certainly Robinson. does not, and he, he made a very good case to me in the car park on, that, on Saturday after the game as well. But when you kick 1,211 goals and you're the state record holder, that should be automatic, according to some very good judges. Perth upsetting uh, Claremont, John. Probably one of the biggest upsets of the season. Um, Claremont's form's been a bit iffy over the last uh, three or four weeks, oh, not including the Foxtel Cup game, which I understand Claremont were very happy with. Well, they've, performance. they've said that that's the best performance under uh, Simon McPhee in, in now in his third year as a coach, which probably means it's their best performance since they played in the 07 grand final, so the best performance of a couple of weeks ago. Um, they did a couple of things. Chad Jones injured, he's hurt his hamstring again and, and will miss at least another week, I think. Uh, they rested Brabazon, they were thinking about resting him maybe before the state game and saw that through. Foss, uh, Andrew Brown, very important player for him, he's their back line general. He's out of action but might come back uh, this coming round. Foster's out as well, but he's been out for a while. Uh, the, the significant thing I think was that their lack of height in the forward line and then um, uh, Bo Wilkes got knocked out behind 70 metres behind the play so I mean if East Fremantle had a player prepared to do that to Michael Ricks or Kyle Horsley they might got over the line. Perth certainly had a player prepared to risk his in immediate future by uh, belting a, an important opposition player did that Not Perth got over the line. really the tactic that you'd want to employ before it No but, but uh, it's modern day football. It's a game. Uh, it's a game of controlled violence, Ross. And occasionally you Not need more than the AFL. Can't have any violence. Oh, well, can't tackle a bloke anymore. Yeah, they can. They do a lot of. They well, run the into each other at high pace, though. Speaking of rules, how come the waffle doesn't have a sub rule next year? Hmm. Maybe Ali Pickett could play on. He's, he's talked about it. You know, ten minutes here and there. Should the waffle go with the sub rule? Mm. No. I think we keep with the four interchange. That's. Let's do what South Australia do and just do things that we think what, are right for the young guys. wear white. You couldn't, you couldn't do that, could you? That would be far too sensible. Mm. I'm still trying to figure out how they do their percentage of a week. You know, they had pur they were wearing pur the same colour as this shirt. Actually, I could almost be a, an umpire. They were wearing purple when the when one of the teams was. They were wearing purple and black when one of the teams was wearing blue and black. Einstein's taken charge of the waffle. It's, maybe it was their marketing department, Ross. They actually, we've, we've been on their case for a while that they should introduce a marketing department. They have done, and they've come up with the purple umpire. Marketing. Well, okay. Well, promotions. I must marketing. Be, must be looking at the or wrong websites. This week's games, John. One on Sunday, and we'll go back to that. And we, yeah. There is a reason why. East Perth versus Peel at Medibank Stadium. Yes, it's a big match. Oh, isn't it? it's 8v9. Just a blockbuster. Loser on the bottom, winner off the bottom. How's East Perth going? They're going to finish oh. with a wooden spoon, but be premiers of Australia. Yeah, it's a. I mean, I don't think you'll ever see that ever again. No, um, well, that, it's funny because they could win the Foxtel Cup and not qualify for yeah. next year. They, well, will it exist next year? Probably not. So it's a one off. reserves comp. No, oh, don't start, Ross. I mean, there's just too many things that we've got to worry about. We're trying to get the waffle right, and it's just all these distractions. Um, now, what were we talking about? East Perth, that East Perth, Peel, Peel Bank Stadium. Peel's Bank worst Saturday. performance of the last couple of months, probably, against East Perth when Josh Smith had a, had a day out down there. I think they've steadied though. That Scott Lysett, I mean, he's an absolute beauty. Their midfield's going pretty well, Peel. I think they'll win it comfortably. East Perth are just, ju only just holding on. Gary Moss is going all right. Good to see he's... Uh, He's performing very well after coming back. He's one of the many players who've come back into the waffle from the AFL, Ross. And, uh, one of the many. Taken him a little while to hit his straps, but was very good. Is Jared Carla Thompson, a West Australian that's come back into the uh, WAFL, or is a Victorian oh, that's come back into I'm the sure AFL? Sure he, Not WAFL. I'm sure he votes uh, in a local electorate, so that makes him a West Australian as far as I do. Would he be in Steve Irons electorate, seeing he's from uh, there? I don't know. I think Chris Judd might be in Steve Irons electorate. He's, a, he's an absentee elector. 
he's a flying fly out, is he? Mm. Got an interesting story about Chris Jones and how he's uh, how he's doing off field with his uh, various financial arrangements. The other day, mm. it was an absolute beauty from a bloke who uh, be doing I think might have been involved in setting it up. So, mm. um, peel for mine going no, going nicely. The break, the break, you know, two weeks off in a row, probably not going to do them a whole heap of good, but. They were going very well before half, and I think they'll beat East Perth, who are only just going. Yeah, I'm going for Peel. I'm not picking East Perth again this year. West Perth versus Subi at Arena Joondla. These have been blockbuster games over the last five years. Probably looked at a couple of weeks ago as if it wasn't going to be. Now it's back on. It's a big one. Oh, it's an absolute belter. Huge. Subi, Subi had a must win against East from Allen. They won it, and they've got another must win, because they know that if they lose this, they're probably out of the hunt for the... For the finals, um, but they've been they've been pretty good against West Perth. Mm-hmm. Seventy three grand final revisited. Don't all, tell all Scotty Waters though that West Perth might have had a bit of an edge over them while he was coaching. No, yeah. he didn't like that. Yeah. Actually, just a, as an aside, what about that story about Lucas Neal overruling the coach yeah. uh, Pim? What was his name? Kip Pim Verbeek, the uh, the soccer coach. Wasn't there a great story about Subi though in two thousand and seven when they got towed up by Clown in the semi final? And I think it might have been a senior, a very senior player who basically said to the coach, we're not going your way anymore. We're going back to the way that's won us two flags in the last three years. And the coach, I guess, was smart enough to say, oh, well, look, if we have to win it, we have to win it. And they did. So there's a case of a captain perhaps overruling a coach to the advantage of the team. And it uh, has helped that particular coach on the on track to a uh, to higher honours. Um, so just to complete it cost Polly Farmer his job at East Perth in 70, 77 so. yeah, yeah but uh, anyway that was a complete aside and I, we shouldn't talk about soccer too much in this but that was a good story with Luke. the more they deny it the more you think it's got in fact that's a donation to charity because you've spoken about what uh, soccer uh, and other yeah, yeah, programs so yeah, sure good, good luck to some Vincent de Paul's for John's into the, into the uh, box. but uh, yeah great game game of the round I think West Perth are going pretty well and I think they'll win at home. There should be a cracking crowd up there, but Subi will push them and I reckon a couple of things. Michael Ricks is in great nick. Broadhurst going really well and uh, a couple of those midfielders going pretty well. Hildebrandt in good nick and Kyle Horsley in the form of his life playing as an in and under in the centre. Um, cracking game, West Perth for me. Very quickly, Perth Swans at Brown Stadium. <sighs> what an important game that is. Swans are gone, Perth probably too far back to make it. They've just played some, some reasonable footy at the moment and I think that uh, there's been some great clashes between t- these two sides last year. Perth beat Swans last year and uh, Andrew Cracker got tagged out of the game for the only time for the season. And wouldn't Simon McPhee have liked to have had 15 minutes of that in the last uh, bit of the grand final having a, a tight tag on Andrew Cracker? I think I'll stick with Perth. They, uh, if you beat the side that's first, you must be doing something nicely, and uh, so I'll back them to beat Swans who are just uh, struggling along at the moment. Adam Hunter not going that well. I'm in with Perth. Can't believe I picked Perth and Peel in the same round. No. Claremont versus South. This game played on Sundays just to avoid a little bit of AFL TV programming. John, I'm going Claremont. Yes, I'll go Claremont as well. I think they'll bounce back pretty hard, and they've got their 81 Premiership team there. They beat South in uh, possibly the best. Waffle Grand Final of the last uh, 30 f- or 40 years, except for last year, of course, and uh, with uh, Barry Beecroft and Noel Morton, he was the bloke, he, he saw a, a head and he, well, he saw a ball, and he kicked it, unfortunately the ball had ears. Mm, not and, uh, Yeah, South kicked six goals, 12 in the second quarter, 18 scoring shots, and they still lost the game. Bruce Monteith, I think, missed 11 consecutive scoring shots, or shots at goal, so, uh, yeah, great game. Celebrations went on for hours and hours and hours, if not days and days. And, and they're still going. Yeah, they might do again on Sunday, but uh, climb up for mine. I think they'll get over the line in that game. All right, that's Let's Waffle for this round. Remember, if you've got anything uh, that you want brought up on Let's Waffle, we've got an email address. It's online sport. That's all one word. Online sport at wanews.com.au. Well, that's Let's Waffle for this week. We'll see you at the football this weekend and remember to stay tuned to thewest.com.au for all your big waffle action.